Hey Kelly in Hotlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut polarized G15 lenses for your Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster, which is the W0366 color, the Mach Arista Tortoise in the 49 eye size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as it comes to me. Of course, your little booklet with the icons in there going through some of their most iconic frames. And yours is in there it is there's yours with the with the g15 lenses is that what that looks like hopefully that's close enough in fact let's get a better look at it this is of course your fold over italian leather case your ray-ban cleaning cloth and junk mail that you get several languages in and the star of the show the main attraction the club master frame which comes with the little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping and i'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. Of course, that has the G15 sticker. And does that look close enough? Hopefully it does. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take my screwdriver and do a little bit of lefty loosey until a little bit more, a little bit more till the screw comes out. Remove that glass, heavy glass breakable lens. Tighten everything back down. That's the one thing about the original lenses, you drop them on the ground and they will shatter, just like dropping a glass bottle. So we're going to put a much safer lens in there made of unbreakable polycarbonate, a high, high impact resistant lens. And I'm going to take your frame, put it into the tracing element of the blocker and hit start. Everybody wants to know, how does the computer know what shape lens to cut? This is why. The stylus comes up and it's going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the inside of the left bevel. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed whether these are prescription or not. Kelly, you know you need prescription. So this is the shape of the lens we will be cutting. Let me move it on to the layout screen. The pupillary distance of your right eye is 29.5. The computer starts at 32.5. I'm going to tap the minus button a couple times till we get to 29.5. I do want to raise the vertical height of the lens a couple millimeters because you're not looking through the center of the lens. Now I've already dotted up your lenses. I've put the optical center of your lens. Isn't that a cool effect when you look through a polarized lens at a computer screen? You get that all the time. And here's a good test. You know how to you can test whether a lens is polarized. You hear the term polar opposites. When you hold the lenses up across from each other, you can see through them. But if you get at 90 degrees, it goes pitch black. Hence the term polar opposites. Because polarized lenses block all horizontal glare. And when you have glare in all the meridians, it goes pitch black. So let's go ahead and put your right lens on there. The reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented and they're just perfectly. So I'm going to do that now. I need to get a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got two here. The black side is the sticky side. Stick this onto the first block. Let's do the same thing now for the second block. And pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. The silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time, it's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm. As I place that there... I'm going to make sure that PD, vertical center, perfect. Make sure the lens is large enough. It is. Nice little silhouette of my fingers there. Hello, how are you? Okay, enough playing around. Let's get back to work. Get everything laid out perfectly there. I'm going to hit this button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Pull the paperweight to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet in there. Check the pupillary distance of which you are 29 in your left. So the left has mirrored the right at 29.5. I'm going to tap the minus button one time. It goes down in half millimeter increments. Lay this out just right. And hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Let's make sure that that's the right. 
So this is the edger. This is what costs forty thousand dollars. It weighs two hundred pounds. It'll do all the work while I run my mouth. I recommend everyone go out buy their own. Then you can cut your own G15 polarized lenses at home, and you won't need this guy anymore to do it for you. The actual cutting wheel is this heavy grit wheel that will grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center will put that channel, that little valley, put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So let's go ahead and pull the shape up onto the computer. That is the shape we'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, I would select that, but we're going to stay with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish it. I would never polish the edge of a, of a sunglass lens to let glare in because that's what it's doing. You're stopping it to stopping glare from coming in and then polished edges allow glare. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front convex surface. And you know what? This time today, I'm not going to put a bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. I just may end up doing it by hand over there. Let's do that, shall we? So, oop, I better put the lens in before I hit start. That is the right lens. Move that there. And actually, I want to see some. Let's do this on manual. Let's try something new for this one. We're going to play along as we go. The door closes, the clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And now it is giving me permission. I've always said that I can move the bevel forwards or backwards. I'm going to do that. Let's just see how this looks. I want to make sure there's only one millimeter on the front of the lens, 1.38 millimeters on the back. When I move it, it gets there. Let's go ahead and do this. I am going to move that front bevel where it comes out. Let's see. Let's go back to the computer. That's it there. Let's do a percentage of that. Let's just... There we go. We're going to move... Move that all around. That's going to look good. That's what we'll do. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. The wheel's going to add up. If you see light flickering in the background now, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high index plastic, and Trivex cut wet. Water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that could be left over from the cutting cycle. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact lenses and have both 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Atlanta, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So speaking of Atlanta, you guys have got the national championship game coming between Alabama and Georgia. An all-SEC national championship. That should be a fun, entertaining game. The other nice thing about your lenses are they are aspheric. I had them flatten out the front curvature of your lens to give you a wider field of view and to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. An aspheric lens is completely round in every direction and gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance that you will not be getting. Now if you notice your lens is completely flat all around the edges just like a nickel if I were to take it out now it would stand up on the counter on its own. going around doing a little bit more the last of the touch-up. With its own check and balance system, it's going to double check exactly again where to place the bevel. So the wheel will drop down, or it will drop down on the bevel wheel. And now it's putting the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Almost like a knife-like edge, a very dull knife like myself, but a knife-like edge nonetheless. But if you were to take the lens out of the frame, it should be sharp enough to cut through a pit 
piece of wet tissue, providing you soak the tissue in water overnight, then press down using all your might, you might be able to cut through that tissue. So water has begun spraying onto the lens to wash away the optical debris, the schwarf, if you will. And now we are done. I'm going to open this door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. Just have to stare at it for a couple hours, but I can do it. So the reason why I did not put a safety bevel on the rear of the lens, that on sunglass lenses, tinted or polarized, you can see that through the front. So I'm only going to lightly do that on the handstone here, which is just like the cutting wheel. It has a bevel right here. If I were to want to put a bevel on the manually, but I'm just going to go around the wheel very lightly. Just to smooth out any rough edges left over from the cutting surface, I'm going to use my thumbnail to now remove what's known as the schwarf, which is optical sawdust. It literally heat. The friction of the cutting wheel has somewhat melted the edge of your lens, and I am going to remove that with my thumbnail if I can. There we go. Okay, now once that's all off the lens, I carefully neatly collect it, and I used to throw it on the floor. Now I toss it in the trash can, which is under the counter, which my loving wife has asked me to do to keep my new lab clean. I'm going to do a little bit of Lefty Lucy again until the screw comes out. Turn the frame around, being very careful not to let the screw pop out of the frame eye wire. I'm now going to do righty tighty to make sure that is tightened down all the way. And we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L, press that on there firmly, and hit start. If you notice, the magnet now has done its job a second time. It's attaching itself there to something in the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. And I'm going to hit start just like before. The door is going to close, the clamp is going to shut, and then the lens is going to be traced again by the two white styluses. You can almost see as it's going to come around, starting up here and tracing the shape of the left side of the lens. And then again, it's going to let me manually override where to place the bevel, but I liked where this turned out. You have a fairly strong prescription, but very minimal edge thickness showing on this frame. That's a good thing of going with the 49 eye size versus the 50. Go ahead and hit start. The other nice thing is no white ring from the safety bevel on your lenses. That's why I wanted to do it by hand. So, now that that is cutting, I can go ahead and remove this block, pull the sticker off, add to my artwork that I'm making here. This blob is going to blow. You are series 9 of my, installment 9, I should say, of my 250 million installment of making a pair of glasses for everyone in the U.S. So make sure you stay tuned for all 9, all 250 episodes. So, let me darken this for you. Don't fall, don't fall. Where's my pen? In case you can't see that, let me darken that. Now I'm going to take that. That is your PD in the vertical decentration of the lens. I'm going to put it into my lensometer. Find the power of your lens, and I am getting minus four and a quarter. That's because your eyes, you are unique. You are minus four and a quarter in each eye. You need 17 steps of far-sided correction. You are very nearsighted. That's why there is a minus sign with your lenses off, with your eyeglasses off. Everything you see is much too large, so your lenses will minify down to the correct size. Now, you are unique. You have no astigmatism in either eye. Your prescription is completely spherical. If it did have astigmatism, I would correct for that then. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F once it's the right size. But yours, all we need to do is reduce the image size. So yours is a piece of cake. Although you still need your glasses. It's a higher than average prescription. Most people's prescriptions are around a minus three. Again, you're on the 17th rung of a ladder. 12th, the 12th rung is about average for most people. It just means you're smarter than most people. But you knew that already, Kelly. You don't need me to tell you. You're smart enough to get your glasses from me, and I commend you for that.
So I was in Atlanta a few years ago for a bowl game, of which my team lost, but I was in an intersection. I saw the smoke pouring out of a building. It turned out, it, I think it was on the way to the Botanical Gardens, or was it the zoo? But it was called Fat Matt's Rib Shack. And it smelled so good. And there was a line of people wrapped around the building for a barbecue sandwich. They were still about 20 minutes from opening on a Sunday. And there was a line, at least 100 people in line already, 20 minutes before they opened. Must be an incredible place to have that kind of loyalty. At least they know you have to get there early. So now you're getting the V-shaped bevel onto the lens. So water has begun spraying on there, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. This will be a little bit shorter since no safety bevel needs to be reapplied. When that's done, the door will open. Kelly, this time I want you to open the door with your mind. Hey, pretty good. First day on the job and you were able to do it. So I'm going to just dry everything off. I'm going to come over here to the wheel again, turn that on, and I'm going to lightly go around putting the safety bevel onto the lens and again use my thumbnail. I used to have to do this a lot. If you go back to my earliest videos, you will see I've worn a V-shaped groove into my thumbnail because I used to have to do this so much on my old Santinelli edger. This Essilor Nexia does a much better job of it. But I guess for $40,000 I can keep a better thumbnail. So in order of my wife, clean that up, drop that into the trash. See a little moisture on the dry everything off. I do not want the lens to be slippery. Actually check a little bit of that schwarf on the front surface of the lens there. Make sure everything is nice and clean. Sorry if none of that was in focus. At least you did get to listen to my voice, and so I know you're rolling your eyes at that. So, Phillips head screwdriver, lefty loosey, till the eye wire comes free. Pop the lens in. Make sure it's in everywhere. And a little of the old righty tighty. I can go ahead and take this block off. Pull that off. Keep adding on to my artwork. Oh, isn't that looking beautiful? It's getting better and better. Try everything again. Let me use my pen to darken that black dot. Now, if you miss any of that, let me recap. <laughs> So, I'm put it in over that black dot again, measure the power, and I don't have to move anything. I'm at minus four and a quarter again, so that is cut perfectly. Now, your pupillary distance, 29.5 and 29 is 58 and a half. Hopefully, you can see that through the card. When I turn the card over, place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens, and then hold it up to the left. We're getting 58.5, so that is cut perfectly. I want to check the vertical height of the lens. 23 I can do that from behind 23 that's looking good so as you guys know this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses I mentioned that when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the US and its territories and military bases but when you get these in the mail there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop into your local place where you had your eye exam and just tell them if it's too loose or too tight and they'll be glad to fix that for you. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. And I'll show you because I'm part, oops, there's a spot there. I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me, and I'll show you guys in just a moment. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are 
one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I am wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 789, which is the punchline of my favorite kid's joke. Why is six afraid of seven? Because 789. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Of course, I'm wearing the blue orange to match my blue orange shirt i always try to match it makes my wife jealous that's right i'm talking about you i'm going to flip these over press down there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do same amount of tension on each hinge so that's that if anyone has any questions you can reach me at free prescription lenses on the contact button or free prescription lenses at gmail.com or better yet you can always leave a question or a comment in the just below the description in the comment section that way someone else can happen to read it and not think of that you could benefit others by having them read your question you can follow me but well, better yet subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to see more of these and you can follow me on instagram at free prescription lenses or on twitter at free rx lenses so Kelly in Atlanta, Georgia. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription polarized G15 lenses for your Ray-Ban 3016 Clubmaster color W0366 in the 49 eye size. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.